Even though this is our third pregnancy, it's our first gender surprise. I just know it's a boy. <laughs> Then explain my weird pregnancy cravings. Boy or girl, we just want the baby to be healthy. We've spent months researching the best place to deliver our daughter. Son. So, the one thing we're not keeping a surprise? It's, it's an, an Eastside, Eastside baby. baby. With maternity and NICU experts, breastfeeding support, and more. Celebrate your baby's birthday at Eastside Medical Center. Visit itsaneastsidebaby.com to learn more. Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. Gwinnett Business Radio is cared for by Eastside Medical Center, providing quality care to Gwinnett County and the greater Atlanta area for over 38 years. And hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gwinnett Business Radio. We are indeed broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio in the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. And as you heard in the open, Gwinnett Business Radio is cared for by Eastside Medical Center. Quality care close to home, Eastside Medical Center has been a community health care leader for over 39 years. Nationally recognized for patient safety, Eastside focuses on delivering quality care by using the most advanced technology and experienced physicians. For more information on Eastside's system of care, visit eastsidemedical.com. Mike Salmond with you alongside Amanda Pierch. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Mike. How are you today? I'm doing much better. Well, well much better than you because you've been under the weather lately. So Please your excuse voice. Excuse my scratchy voice. It's still a little scratchy, yes. but uh, you're going to power through because we have a very special episode today. And I am so excited. We have a pink takeover in studio today. Real Men Wear Pink special episode benefiting the American Cancer Society. Not only are you and I definitely down in pink our producer duffy dixon is back there behind the board she is in pink from head to toe and our three guests are all in pink as well because real men wear pink absolutely and our guest today joining us from rico bruce nelson michael jones and bill floor gentlemen you all look great by the way thank you for joining us today <laughs> thank you good morning thank, thank you, you very much. much good morning and that would be amanda whistling not me just to be clear <laughs> bruce we're going to start with you, then we'll go to Michael and then Bill. Tell us about your position at RICO, and then we'll get into this whole campaign. All right, sounds good. I'm the director of customer support services in our Tucker facility, and pretty much that's over the back office support for our technicians in the field and all of our customers, as well as our dealer partners. So all the things you can think of like call centers and engineering and technical support and websites, all, all of those things that it takes to keep a service organization running. Okay, Michael. Uh, I'm the Vice President for Human Resources for RICO USA, and that's probably uh, roughly about 18,000 plus employees that I have human resources custodial capability and responsibility for. Uh, and uh, I've been with the organization 22 years. In addition wow. to sort of my core responsibility, I'm also responsible for inclusion and diversity, which lends itself to community engagement. And so this is a direct tie into what all of our employees stand for relative to giving back to the community and supporting great causes. Great. Great to have you here. And Bill? Very good. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Floor. I'm a division manager for Rico Electronics, which is right here in uh, Gwinnett up in Lawrenceville next across from the Gwinnett Airport and uh, we run the toner operations toner division where we manufacture toner and I uh, manage the technical division technical engineering maintenance quality and the production divisions so yeah. I'm very glad to be here and what's really cool Amanda is my cousin has worked for Rico for 15 years and I finally met somebody <laughs> at Rico that knows who my cousin is absolutely <laughs> Gary here you are yes I was going to say world. hi Gary yes so we're here to celebrate Real Men Wear Pink, the campaign to help raise awareness, raise uh, breast awareness. No, breast Mike cancer always does awareness. That. I it's did it wrong again. It's breast cancer awareness. And yes. For those of you out there that are unaware, October, mm -hmm. the entire month of October is in celebration Absolutely. of breast cancer awareness. So yes. these gentlemen have taken on the initiative of wearing pink every single day of the month. Every day. Got it. Tell us how that works. What's going on here? So Real Men Wear Pink is a is a offshoot from American Cancer Society. As Amanda mentioned, it's wearing pink every day in the month of October to raise awareness and also to raise funds. So nationally, there's different teams set up. Luckily for us, we're the Atlanta division, which is the global headquarters for American Cancer Society. So we're right in the backyard or, or the shadow of, of the global headquarters. 
meaning that we need to finish number one. <laughs> so <laughs> Home team. Yeah, home team. We have to do that. Yes. And it's been going on for quite a few years, but it's gained popularity lately. Um, we recruit 25 local business leaders or business owners or sports figures to help in the cause. And as well as even if you notice in the NFL, Crucial Catch is a piece of that where you see the stadiums decked out and pink things like that. And at the golf tournament that we were just at not too long ago, the long drive champ, remind me of his name? Maurice Allen Maurice is the world's Allen. long distance driving champion. Yeah. He is also an alumni and a part of this with Michael and Bill this and participating, year. participating, yes. That's correct. So all of you have to wear pink for the entire month. We but there, there's also a, a monetary thing uh, uh, tied into this as well. A little bit. How does that work? <laughs> uh, it, it works um, really well. So I um, <clears throat> across the Atlanta organization, uh, we're committed to about a quarter of a million. Uh, and that's all of the leaders that Bruce just talked about. And so each of us have really a bounty of about $10,000. Uh, Bruce was a former real man of, uh, man of pink. And so he raised over $15,000. So we wow. all, uh, both Bill and I, have a stretch goal, uh, mm -hmm. courtesy of Bruce's history of uh, 15000 plus. Uh, so uh, in addition to the targeted 10000 we have a little bit more of a stretch goal. And uh, Yeah, we uh, can't let Bruce beat us. No, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm, we're, we're going to beat him. I'm, I'm coming for Bill. I'm <laughs> sitting at, I think, number 10 as of about five minutes ago. Oh, and, uh, I looked go. at yes. the stats, <laughs> and I see four, you're well right over 10000 correct? 14000 yeah, and you're close fantastic. behind. I wouldn't say close, but I, I have work to do. To He's got a lot in the bag. He's sandbagging. So I know. It's all going to show up. It's so all of you have to raise up. a certain amount of money as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, how do you do that? I mean, are you just going up to friends saying, hey, can you give me something? How does that work? <clears throat> Some of it. At, by, by hook or crook, you just got to get it one way or <laughs> there another? You go. you go everywhere. You go on LinkedIn. You go to all the social media you can, Facebook. But uh, we've actually raised over $11,000 in-house at uh, – at Rico, um, where my location is, and we've done bake sales, uh, we've sold wristbands, uh, and we've had direct uh, donations as well. So we do have a website that folks go in and they just take care of it. And I've asked them to share out from there. So yeah, there's a lot of different avenues we take to to raise funds. It's amazing how network marketing takes Absolutely. off, like you mentioned, through social media and word of mouth, Absolutely. in such a, a reputable cause that you're all participating in. I can imagine that you're yeah. gaining a lot of traction. Yes, and today can help as well. So okay. we appreciate it. <laughs> Having to go the entire month, uh, where the, everyone who's participating in this campaign has to wear pink the entire month. All month. And long. some of you guys are wearing pink socks, and I mean, you guys are all in. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going on underneath. If you guys yeah. have we, we don't know what's <laughs> we, we have a pink out event on thursday and you'll see some interesting things probably thursday so did some of you guys have to go shopping before the month began uh, uh, yes absolutely because Lots unless you're going to have this, it's an investment you can't have the same shirt every day you'll be doing a lot of wash no. exactly that's a exactly. wife's dream going yeah. out and picking out so many pink yes. outfits for my their wife gentlemen. is hitting all the racks yes. and yeah. now here's a funny milk. thing so i told someone at work i have to work i have to wear it every day she says you had 31 sh pink shirts i said no but i do have five in a washing machine so i'm <laughs> alternating go. yeah yeah, I would think that it's good though people because not that a lot guys don't wear pink. A lot of guys do wear pink and it looks good on them, but maybe not as often as you might think. So maybe the fact that people go up to you and they're going, "Wait, you're wearing you're wearing pink again," at least spurs the conversation, mm -hmm. and then you can get into why you're wearing the pink. That's exactly, right. yeah. exactly, and uh, it's it's really a catalyst to the conversation. And as Bruce mentioned. Uh, in addition to raising money, this is really about also raising awareness. And uh, we, we know from awareness and education and prevention, all of those things sort of cascade together. So the opportunity to leverage the conversation from, hey, Michael, this is your you know fifth day wearing pink. What's up? Uh, <laughs> it, it lends itself to the educational side as well. Yeah, and that, that's, like you said, that's the effect we want. You know, of course, we want the money going in, but we want people, and even at our work, that we know educated about the available care, what's available for them to get treatment, to have financial help, and that's what this does. And this is just a great opportunity for all of us. So, and that's a time to bring up that a lot of the funds that we raise here with Real Men Wear Pink, especially in Atlanta, go to the Hope Lodge, which is... Um, right at the Emory campus. And, and what that is is sometimes when people are far away, maybe two or three hours from treatment, but they want to go to a facility uh, downtown and they can't get transportation back and forth or, or they need a hotel to stay in. And, and sometimes the treatment can be three and four months. So being able to stay in a location like that, the funds that Michael and Bill are raising and I did last year and all the real men are doing go towards that. 
as well as transportation and then most importantly the research behind it so because one day we do want this to to be a thing of the past and maybe real men wear pink goes to something else and we don't have to worry about breast cancer let me ask you really quickly that's very interesting you're talking about the hope lodge and that's fantastic so the money that you all collect goes towards the families you said transportation and offering them a place to stay while their loved one is undergoing treatment yes that is that's very commendable. yeah it's it's uh it's right now 64 beds um and it is just like a uh an extended stay type of uh, facility. Mm -hmm. They have, it, it turns into a community. I've done the tour two or three times. It is open. I would love, you know, to offer people to go and see it. Where is it located? Um, it's right on the Emory campus. Um, and just seeing kind of the camaraderie and the things, it's not just a place to stay, right? It's, it's you're there with people that are at all stages of their treatment. So I've been on the tour three different times and each time I've seen a graduation, where somebody is finishing and gets to leave and go ring home and ring the bell. Exactly. Yeah. They do wow. have a bell yeah. in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people on their first day, and you can see the, the, the concern and the fright in their face. Of course, one, you know, battling something terrible, but, but two, coming into a new location and not knowing what to expect. But within days, you can see the, the, the way they all work together. So it's more than just having a, a place to stay. It's, it's the yes. things they go through together. In Absolutely. a community, like you mentioned, exactly they kind of right. form. And I'm sure they leave with, with friends um, that they've made in that facility. Lifetime friends. Yeah. We hear great stories along that. Yes. And this past weekend, we were at um, the Hope Ball. Uh, and it was amazing, the stories you hear. And one of the stories, and I've never known anything about the Hope Lodge. So coming through this program, I'm learning a lot. And I'm sharing everything with my 850 REI employees, fellow employees that I'm learning. And, <clears throat> sorry, the incredible story was uh, this woman going under, undergoing treatment. Going in, she was scared. She didn't know what to go into. She thought it was going to be doom and gloom. She got there. It was the opposite. She said it was incredible. Everyone is so upbeat and positive, and that got her through. She said the scariest time was when she had to leave. She said, because while I'm there, everybody looks like me, and we're all the same, and we're going through it. When I leave, I'm different. Mm -hmm. I'm on my own, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole different perspective, and that's an angle that I never thought of. Mm -hmm. so. Mike Sam and Amanda Pierce with you here on Gwinnett Business Radio, a very special edition of uh, Gwinnett Business Radio, as we're talking about the Real Men Wear Pink uh, campaign for breast cancer awareness. And joining us is Bruce Nelson, Michael Jones, and Bill Floor with Rico and, and Rico Electronics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, guys, you see a lot of companies that give, I don't want to say just give lip service, but they support and they do great work in the community. But I'll tell you, you guys seem to have taken it to a whole new level, and everybody is bought in. How deep does this run? Yeah, it, it's pretty deep. Uh, I think, as we mentioned, uh, American Cancer Society is not only a community partner uh, for RICO, but they're a customer of ours. And uh, you'll look, if you look at the Real Men of Pink uh, sort of lineup or the cohort that we are part of, uh, there are a number of uh, leaders on that um, on that panel that are also customers as well and some uh, vendor partners and so when you start to think about uh, the community of giving and the linkage and network you know this sort of business sort of brings us together and I, I would say that the cause and in this particular cause you know mails us forever so regardless of where the business direction takes us this is an opportunity where employees at every level all walks of life get to come in and, and bond on one c common focus that's a great point if you think about uh, last year and we had a we came together and say to your question how do we how do we raise funds what are we going to do right is it bake sales is it car washes what kind of things can we all do together and uh, we had an employee last year said well why should you be the only one to wear pink right why don't we have a day where everybody in mm -hmm. the facility wears pink so out of that was born tomorrow is actually a national pink out on october 10th where they're asking all local businesses as well nationally asking businesses to put their lights in pink or all their employees to wear pink when we did it last year we had all of our facilities in georgia to participate and to mike's point every level vice presidents uh ceo uh, down to every agent and analyst on the call center was wearing pink. And, and just to look and to see, you talk about awareness, 
to see everybody in the building doing that. And then our other buildings throughout Georgia doing the same thing. And now to see that grow into something nationally where everyone's going to be wearing pink on the same day. And I encourage everybody tomorrow to wear pink. And, and you talk about the awareness that, that that can make for everybody that's listening is incredible. All right, message received. Duffy, Amanda, we're all wearing pink again tomorrow. <laughs> Two days you in know, a row. Duffy and I got pink. <laughs> Has there been anybody that's kind of messed up or, oh, my God, they, they came into work and they forgot and they weren't wearing pink? And if so, is there a penalty box? How does that work? <laughs> so, so I've personally issued a challenge uh, to the RICO team. If anyone catches me out of pink any day of the week. Uh, it's a, it, not even at work. Not even at work. Kroger, uh, you see him anywhere? Right. Weekend. The gym. It matter. It's, it's a $100 bounty that I, oh, I will nice. give a donation on their behalf. Wow. So, uh, and I, when I walk through the centers and the different locations, you know, everyone says, don't. I need to start stalking you. <laughs> exactly. I wish that. You, yeah, it won't happen. Let me catch you on Instagram. Everybody's watching. I and mean, you mentioned the socks a little earlier. That's kind of a protection. That was what I had last year. Just in case, you know, you get up and you, oh, and you, and you don't grab socks, a shirt or something. You okay, you wear some socks, a tie. Um, Throw a pair of socks in the car. Yeah, <laughs> keep yeah. something just off. in case. That's yeah. exactly Have right. Have a hat, pink hat available, whatever you got, right? That's Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. For uh, let me back up just a bit and let's talk a little bit about Rico because I talked to folks and I'm very familiar with Rico. I've taken a tour of the facility over in the Tucker area and I am amazed. You guys are not a copier company like a lot of folks think. You guys are into technology and electronics and, and everything. And I, I can't even go into everything you guys do, but I'll, I'll let you guys do that. Give give us a, a little more, bit of a broad overview of what Rico provides because I don't think a lot of folks are aware of everything that you guys do. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take a little bit of that, and I'll let Bruce chime in. And so really, you know, we like to label ourselves as a technology organization that is really uh, founded around innovation. Over 80-plus years of innovation, 40,000-plus patents. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, we do have a hardware component. So there are, you know, office print and imaging uh, hardware that we sell that's really been our core, but we're well beyond that. So when we start talking about you know, document. So what's coming off of the printer document workflow? Uh, we help businesses with that. Uh, digital imaging, uh, print production. Uh, some people aren't aware that some of the, you know, larger uh, page machines, you know, we're part of uh, that arena as well. And then there's IT and technology support. And uh, Bruce leads an organization that, you know, is readily uh, tied into that part of the organization. And then we have what I would call uh, verticals, where we have specialized solutions in healthcare, uh, higher education, uh, the legal vertical, <clears throat> and then all of that is customized to those specific industries. Let me ask you a question really quickly, and this is just from left field. Um, I came from a little town down south called Peachtree City, Georgia, hey. and just on the outskirts is Noonan, where the American Cancer Society was recently just built. Or, yeah, the Cancer Treatment Center of America, excuse me. And I've seen these vans that you mentioned, Bruce, that are transporting um, patients to and from local hotels, so on and so forth. Do you guys have any involvement with them specifically down there? Um, with your organization, is that something that you would like to maybe reach Well, just through the American Cancer South? Society. Okay. As Michael mentioned, more than just what we do here to help the community and help the fight, but they are a great business partner as well. We have, as Michael mentioned, many other things. We do manage services where we have on-site employees working for customers. We have that at the Cancer Society, which means we have about 8,000 of those employees across the country which are embedded within an organization, almost like they're an employee of the American Cancer Society or whichever other organization chooses to do that. And, 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 and Mike, to expand kind of on the things we do outside of, you know, we say not just a copier company. That's something that we've lived with for, for 80 plus years, like Michael um, said. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. We're the leading market share in the, in, in, in the office products industry. That's something to be very proud of. But at the same time, we are so much more than that. I already mentioned the managed services. Michael mentioned the IT services, but workplace services. Maybe the best way to think about it is anything at work that can help people work smarter and better and imagine a different way to do things. Um, it, it, me, personally, being over the back office type of support, we've had the ability to be able to to sell and share the infrastructure that we've built. If you think about an 80-year-old company that ha has to support millions of customers and hundreds of dealers and thousands of technicians, the, the, the infrastructure behind that, all of the little things that it takes to do it, 
we have found have been a value to many other customers that don't want to build a national service organization or call centers or engineering support and all of those things. So we actually, in this day and age of, of, of outsourcing maybe overseas or offshore, we actually have customers that outsource to RICO to do those type of things for them. So again, it's so much more than, than just the office product side of things, but we're also still very proud that we are a leading uh, manufacturer in that arena. And, and Bruce, your, your footprint's all over the area, especially all over Atlanta, but especially here in Gwinnett County. I mean, it seems like everywhere I go, whether it's the offices on Sugarloaf Parkway in Duluth or out uh, Satellite Boulevard out towards Buford or yeah. across from the Gwinnett County Airport off 316, I don't know if people realize the amount of employees that RICO has in this area and, 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 and how many people are, are part of the RICO family. It's huge. It's, it's a wonderful uh, thing. And, you know, uh, not a lot of folks uh, realize we have that manufacturing site right up the road. You know, we manufacture the dry toner product and we also manufacture thermal paper. Um, but, you know, Michael can tell you more about the whole breadth of how many we have in Georgia. And it's just incredible. So he yeah, went right over. I'm sorry, real quick. But he went right over the thermal paper real quick. But everybody knows this. If you go into a grocery store and you see the labels on the meat packaging or, or if you travel and you get a baggage tag that sticks to your yeah. to your suitcase, they all came from that the one that you can't here. get off. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good because it's top quality. That's made by us. Rico. But, but yes. that's made right here Absolutely. in Lawrence. It's a curse and a blessing. It's a curse and a blessing. You got it. And, you know, when you get these beautiful printed copies, mm -hmm. we made that right here. So it's fantastic to see the quality. And that's what we hang our hat on is top quality products. That's that is our key, one of our top key fundamentals. You got it. Yeah. And we're, we're probably about thirty five hundred, four thousand strong in the uh, state of Georgia combined with all RICO entities. Mm -hmm. So a significant employer, if you will, for the uh, state. Absolutely. Well, this has been wonderful, and, and the, the campaign's been a lot of fun. We've been able to see it firsthand. We were at the golf tournament covering that for you uh, last month. Uh, as we wrap things up, uh, I'll just go around the table. Anything that we may have forgotten about that you might want to get in, would we'll, now's the time, but I'll also add this question as well. When it comes to the Real Men Wear Pink campaign, maybe your biggest surprise, good or a good surprise, hopefully, that mm -hmm. maybe you didn't expect when you started this whole thing. And uh, I, I guess we'll start here uh, with Bill, and we'll go through Michael and then Bruce. Um, anything else that we may want to touch upon and maybe the, and your biggest surprise about the campaign so far? Uh, my biggest surprise was just uh, how many people have been affected by breast cancer. It's, um, I believe the statistics are one in six uh, have, um, one in six women have, breast cancer and it's a real have, thing for uh, men yes. too yeah. yes yeah. It, it, men that's right mm -hmm. and that was something that um some of the folks at work said oh that's just women no it's not mm -hmm. just women and on social media that's what i've seen too people say real men wear pink and blue because men get it as well so mm -hmm. it's a very good uh point but th this has just been eye-opening to me and it's been rewarding uh and i I'm excited that my top management, Bruce, contacted us because we have different RICO groups, and they asked me to check into it. When I did it, I said, I want to do it. And we have a uh, RICO Way production system. It's sort of like the Toyota production system, but we have ours. RICO Way production system, we have 12 key fundamentals. And key fundamental number five is corporate social responsibility. And we are stepping up to the plate by doing this campaign and we feel fantastic about it. It's extremely rewarding, and I really appreciate uh, these guys here with me, Michael and Bruce. It's just been fantastic, and thank you for having us on here today. Thank you for course, having me. Yeah. Yes. I think for me, it's just it's really the amazing support, and it's at every level. So uh, whether it's Bruce uh, or Co-Chair Lee who's supporting us or the American Cancer Society resources, but – I think even more importantly, as I'm getting the word out and, and folks are looking at the website and looking at my page and considering whether or not they're going to give or whether or not they're going to leverage their networks to giving or education, uh, the amount of commentary that's coming, about, uh, coming back and folks are sharing is just unbelievable. And so when I say support, uh, it's support uh, in terms of resources that are being provided. It's support in terms of, you know, just you know, folks saying, hey, go for it, I'm behind you, and they're sharing a little bit of their personal stories. Uh, the encouragement's just been absolutely tremendous, and it, it almost makes me feel like, Amanda and Mike, that where have you been? You know, how come you haven't stepped up before now? Uh, and so it, it's really exciting for me from that vantage point. 
To add to that really quickly, I will say it's a great chance for everybody that's participating and all your donors and the community to get to know each of you individually, because I got to read both of your beautiful bios and learn a little bit about you as a person before I just knew about your roles with Enrico or your participation in this campaign. Thank you very much. And also this, Michael, you mentioned 1,800 people that you oversee or something like that. A thousand. A thousand. (laughs) thousand. Put another zero on there. Okay, another zero zero there. (laughs) And no matter where you are, if you're the top dog or anybody down below, you know, working on night shift somewhere, everybody Absolutely. can participate in this. Absolutely. And make an impact. That's Absolutely. the beauty. That is the beauty. Yes. And Bruce? So for me, probably the most shocking thing, and, and, and I'll echo what uh, Bill said, is the number of people that are affected. You can't hardly meet anyone that hasn't had a relative or a friend or a neighbor or somebody that has been, you know, it's really had to put up, put up with the fight. But the, the thing that really struck with me and and i mentioned the hope lodge and the transportation was the number of people and stories that we heard where someone would say well i need the treatment but i need to wait until i can afford to get a hotel room near emory or i need to wait until i can get transportation or i can't go three days a week because i only have a ride one day a week those are real stories Mm -hmm. and you would think that it's easy to say that if i contracted this then i would do this or that but until it happens to you you really don't understand what other people go through. And the number of stories I heard where people were waiting to make a decision like that, when you really shouldn't be waiting at all, you shouldn't have to wait, you shouldn't have to face cancer alone. So that's really what we try to do is make sure that uh, the funds that we raise, the awareness that we bring to it helps somebody individually out there somewhere that, that needs that kind of help. Well said. Bruce Nelson, Michael Jones with Rico USA, Bill Floor with Rico Electronics. Um, great work. Uh, not much more to say other than for those that would like to be able to contribute and help out and participate, is there a website they can go to? The easiest thing they can do, there, there is a website, but rather than go through the lengthy URL, the best thing to do is just search Real Men Wear Pink of Atlanta. And there you'll see all 27 of the uh, um, honorees this year, including Bill Floor and Michael Jones. So you could search Real Men Wear Pink Michael Jones, Real Men Wear Pink Bill Floor. You'll go right to their sites, read their bios, see the things about them, hear more about the program. And, yes, there's a link on there to make a donation. And, And let me close by saying this. Every little bit helps. I know some people think that, you know, I don't have $1,000, I don't have $100. Every little bit uh, they mentioned last year the 15000 I made. The thing I'm most proud of last year was, was I wasn't the highest contributor from fundraising, but I had the most people contribute. Yeah, so beautiful. it was a lot of, yeah. lot of small donations that right. made up that number. Yes. So if you're listening and you feel like it's in your heart, just a little bit for either one would help. And for what it's worth, you all look great in pink. And the, 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 well, the funny thing is, right. anybody who looks at our picture, our group picture that's going to be on the website, too, you're all wearing pink, but they're all different shades of pink. Yes. So it's not Absolutely. like it's just one color. There's, there are there's so many shades of pink so out there, Mike. Shades. Yes. So you all look great. So hey, I tip my hat to you, gentlemen, for, for everything you do for the community and as Thank well you. as this initiative. Thank, Thank you for you. being with us today. Uh, for again, having. Bruce Thank and uh, Michael with Rico USA and Bill with Rico Electronics, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And I um, want to remind everybody that uh, this show is available to listen to anytime you want, 24-7. Go to Business Radio X, select the Gwinnett Studio, and not only will you see this episode, but seven years' worth of Gwinnett Business Radio there. Uh, check it out anytime. And if you aren't already following us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, please do so at Gwinnett Business Radio X. And you can also listen to us on Spotify, YouTube, YouTube, and iTunes. And iHeartRadio. Uh, iHeartRadio. I knew yes. there was another one out there as well. We're all over the place. <laughs> nice. So uh, we're happy to get the word out. And uh, we appreciate you guys allowing Business Radio X to be a part of this as well. And hopefully we'll, uh, uh, you'll, you know, have us back and we'll do this for for years on end like you say bruce until we can finally knock this thing out that's called cancer we'll keep doing it absolutely thank you so much for having us all right for amanda and for our great producer on site duffy dixon who looks great in her pink as well i'm mike salmon we'll see you next time here on gwinnett business radio